Hey everyone, Eddie Gray here with thepipenook.com And as usual, I'm here in the West Parlor today to talk to you about uh, something that, uh, an event that I was just able to attend. Many of you know about it, many of you have already seen videos about it actually. Uh, certainly on the Pipe Cottage uh, channel, uh, he made a video uh, on site at this event. But just this past weekend, I believe it happened on March the 4th, I was able to attend the 500th episode live recording of the Country Squire Radio. Now it was their 500th and final uh, episode. After 10 years and 500 episodes, uh, they've decided to call it a day. And, uh, and believe you me, that that's a momentous occasion because they're one of the most popular, if the most popular, uh, pipe smoking podcast uh, at this time. But there's so much more to it. I mean, it's such a... That podcast has been such a treasure trove of information, both for the new pipe smoker as well as the more advanced pipe smoker for many, many years, for 10 years. For a year longer than I've been doing this channel, I've been on YouTube, I believe, about nine years now since 2014 and you know Bo York and John David Cole I don't think when they started that podcast they had any idea they'd been be doing it for 10 years straight and they're both you know 10 years older they have young families, you know, young children. Uh, they're both small business owners now. They live in different towns since Bo moved. And uh, it's just m becoming much more difficult for them to regularly put out that show. And I can't imagine putting out, a, a on average, I'd say 45-minute podcast every week. For 10 years? Honestly, I'm a pipe and tobacco enthusiast, but I don't know that I could come up with a topic and that much content every single week. You guys know sometimes this YouTube channel has gone silent for uh, a few months at a time just because I don't, I can't really think of anything new to talk about that I haven't already covered. So, you know, they put a lot of work into that podcast, a lot of work, a lot of research, a lot of uh, preparation, so I commend them, and, you know, all of those episodes, at least the newest 400 episodes, are going to be available in uh, per perpetuity uh, for the foreseeable future. So, you know, that'll still remain a, a wealth of, uh, a wealth of, uh, knowledge that we can delve back into. Now, me personally, I haven't listened to every single one of those episodes. I probably haven't listened to half of them, but now there's a finishing point. Like I, I can collect them all, so to speak. I have a chance to do that. Whereas before... I don't know that I'd ever have reached the end, uh, honestly. It's a lot of stuff to go through. Let me relight this and we'll do some housekeeping. So I'm smoking my Savinelli Roma Lucite 320 author shape. Uh, this is the 6mm version. Sometimes I do have 9mm versions in stock of the Roma Lucites. 
And just a side note, I've mentioned this before, but you know, with 9mm pipes, filtered pipes being my preference, if I can't get something in 6mm or in 9mm regularly, it's not a deal breaker for me to go with the 6mm version. And that's what happened with this one. I got this early on before I carried the 9mm versions. But with the advent of those Savinelli 6mm charcoal filters, they work wonderfully in 6mm filtered pipes. Whether it's Savinelli or uh, Missouri Meerschaum filtered pipes or Dr. Grabo's or what have you. Those Savinelli charcoal filters in 6mm work exceedingly well. almost as well as the 9 millimeters to the point where most blends I don't notice uh, much of a difference when I'm smoking if at all. So let's get into this event. So the Country Squire uh, Pipe Shop in Jackson, Mississippi uh, hosted the event. Um, so there was a big party going on that weekend uh, at the uh, on site at the pipe shop the recording happened uh, a couple of doors down they were able to to do a makeshift space that was um, you know a commercial space that wasn't in use at the time I won't give away anything about the 500th episode or the 499th episode um, because they're not out yet as of the recording of this video. But what I wanted to talk about was the event itself. I do my best to go to a pipe show once a year if I can. Um, I used to go to the Nashville pipe show and then that went away and then... Uh, Briar Works, which is now in Columbia, Tennessee, just south of Nashville, kind of took up the banner. I've gone to their pipe show, the Mule Town Pipe Show, uh, two or three times. I don't like to travel. I, I definitely don't like um, air travel. I'll do it if I absolutely have to, but... Uh, you probably won't see me at the Chicago Pipe Show or on the West Coast or anything like that. But if I can drive to it, I, I like to try to make one a year. Um, so this year I had to choose between Mule Town and uh, the Country Squire event. I'd never been to Country Squire. And since this was a one-time event, that's why I decided to go that route this year. But uh, I had a feeling there would be some uh, YouTube pipe community people, viewers and presenters, at the event. And that turned out to be the case. And uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to spend most of my time with four gentlemen, um, primarily with um, Spurgeon Piper Wilson. He was at the event. He was the first uh, person in the YouTube community I was able to meet. And then Alan at the, uh, the Pipe Cottage. So the three of us were able to spend a decent bit of time together. Of course, we you know did some mixing around and talked to different folks. I was able to talk to a couple of industry people, Jeremy McKenna, uh, the president of Sutliff Tobacco, uh, Bill Haggerty from Laodice, a few other folks, um, and uh, 
you know, then I also got to spend a good bit of time uh, with John David Cole as well as as Bo York. Um, and just, you know, good conversation, good camaraderie, good fellowship. Uh, those four gentlemen were, you know, are all Christian men that I was able to really get um, some feedback, some input, some edification from, uh, you know, as men of faith, uh, and two, at least two of them, small business owners, three of them, I believe, small business owners, and one a minister, uh, and, you know, it was just a good time, it was a good time, and, uh, I just want to, I know I talked about this actually in Alan's video over, if you want to check that out, on the Pipe Cottage uh, YouTube channel. We talked about the, the value of community and the value of these kinds of events. Um, it's so great to put names with faces and have that in-person interaction. Um, the YouTube Pipe community is excellent. Uh, for those times when you can't share a pipe face to face and have those in person interactions, but really, uh, there's there's just no replacing that. So I would say if you have a pipe show in your area or an event uh, like uh, the 500th episode recording, or even just a pipe shop anywhere close by, if you can get there in a day you know, within an hour or so and come back, go there as much as you feel you can. Meet some folks. Um, that's just irreplaceable. Um, what else do I want to say about that? Oh, I will tell you some stuff they gave away. Let me relight. So John David Cole pulled out all the stops, and he had some friends who also uh, helped out with some giveaway stuff. Uh, they sold tickets to the event, which were $25. And some may balk at that until you, you know, rattle through the list of everything that was included for your $25 ticket. First up, on Saturday, when the recording happened, just before that, they fed us a barbecue lunch. So we had a barbecue lunch. Afterwards, they had samples of beers and uh, different whiskeys and whatnot. And ev everybody uh, got a grab bag, got a swag bag that was branded with Country Squire. It, in, it, it included a few things. So you got a button that says uh, Country, what does it say? Country Squire Radio, episode 500, I was there. Nice little button. A branded pocket jar for the event, Country Squire Radio, episode 500, I was there. This right here is a $13, you know, item. Pocket jar is a gift. And it came with a sample of the pipe tobacco blend that John David Cole uh, introduced at the event. It's actually a raisin flavored tobacco, uh, which I haven't smoked yet, but... Uh, Kind of an ongoing uh, joke on Country Squire Radio that most blends smell like raisins to a lot of people. <laughs> so he finally made a raisin flavored blend. But it's called Fine Then, F I N E, Fine Then. And this will be a limited edition tobacco available at Country Squire, at the Country Squire. Most likely, 
also for uh, phone orders if you want to call in and get you get you some of that while it's still available and then our friends at Sutliff Jeremy McKenna uh, showed up with 500 numbered tens of Country Squire Radio 500th and final episode and you see mine is I believe 462 of 500 um, this is a Virginia flake and it says on the back this flake cut tobacco is comprised of simply simply of red Virginia tobaccos that have been aged for over 14 years 14 year old Virginia flake they didn't just throw this together. They pulled out all the stops for our friends at Country Squire Radio. I'm not cracking this tin for a while. And of course, uh, I did my best to get both Bo and John David to, to sign this for me as a keepsake. Wonderful. That was a gift from Sutliff for everybody that was there that day. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm sure there's leftovers of those 510s. I'm guessing they will sell those at the store until they're gone. But don't hold me to that. They did their best to impress on everyone. Please just take 110. And I did. What else? They gave us a, well, they gave us a free, a free beer in the bag. Um, that has been dispatched. <laughs> um, uh, we also got a little um, flavored like a little sample bottle of a flavored vodka honeysuckle flavored vodka oh and they gave us a three ounce sample from bean fruit beanfruit.com which is a coffee roaster. Three ounces of whole bean. And that's in my coffee grinder at the moment. For my morning coffees. Speaking of which. Mmm. Not bad. I bought a pipe, which I'm not going to share on uh, on camera, but I bought yet another 320. You guys don't need to see yet another 320. And you guys know I can buy Savinelli pipes all day long. But uh, I wanted one from the Country Squire since I was there. So that'll be my Country Squire pipe. That I can remember fondly about the weekend when I smoke it. I purchased uh, Friday when I showed up the day before the event. I purchased this tin of Sutliff tobacco uh, that came out three years ago for the Country Squire's 50th anniversary. And this, I believe, is a Virginia Perique. But this, they are, they still had some of these tins available for their 50th anniversary, and uh, that's going in the cellar for a while too. But I had such a good time, you know. I was able to uh, share a meal, a couple of meals with Wilson, and one meal with Alan. Shared a couple of adult beverages with uh, Bo and JD, and many others. I, d I don't want to start rattling off names because I know I'll forget people. But those are the primaries that you guys here on YouTube would, would uh, recognize. But just such a great event. Bo and John David, I want to thank you guys. Uh, John David in particular, I know you were the boots on the ground for this event. For most of it. I want to thank you so much 
for putting on such a great event and for pulling out all the stops. If you guys ever do a pipe show in Jackson, I'll make every effort to be there and to help promote it. Not saying they will, you guys, but uh, that, that would be great. You know there was a New Orleans pipe show for a year, maybe two years, and we haven't seen that come back. Texas pipe show is a bit far for me, but if there's not one closer in, I might go to the Texas pipe show uh, next year. We'll see. Like I said, I like to hit at least one event a year if I can. But, uh, and for pipe shows, I don't really set up a booth. I've never done that. I just like to be one of the gang and hang out and, you know, spend time with the community and not be tied behind a booth. I probably miss out on a lot of sales that way, but, uh, that's how I do it. Um... I think that's it you guys I've got more videos on the way I did want to mention I'm gonna start mentioning this in my next couple of videos I am so close to 10,000 subscribers you guys and I'm very thankful for that but I'm on a, a, a push for 10,000 subs I've seen other channels explode when they hit the 10,000 mark and I've already seen growth. I've seen pretty pretty good growth in the past um, month as I've closed in on that 10,000. And of course, as a business owner, I would like to reach as many people as possible with my videos. But uh, it's crazy. I'll look at channels that have 50,000 subs or even 100,000 subs. Uh, and I'll look at their views per video for recent videos and I come pretty close to that with 10,000 subs so I have a a, a, um, a loyal following a lot of you guys that are sub to me watch my videos I would say about 20 percent 15 to 20 percent per video and that's pretty good that's pretty good a lot of folks only see, you know, one to five percent of their actual subscribers watching their videos. So thanks so much for sticking with me all these years. Well, we're going to leave it at that. Like I said, I've got some other video ideas coming. I will be making more videos and doing more live streams in the days to come. Now that the pipe nook is back on all cylinders and we're selling pipes, uh, things to shove in your pipe, and accessories all on the website, I'm not as uh, timid about making videos as I was for the past year. So you're going to see more content from me in the days to come. So if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate it. And as always, I'm glad you got to see me, and we'll chat with you later.